Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. <laughs> I'm so glad you've joined us again today. We are uh, just excited about being able to be together, even if it's not in person, and uh, glad that you are with us. We're going to continue on what God has given us to talk about this year, and I, I'm telling you, God knew at the beginning of this year what we would need to be learning about this year, and this is the perfect study for what is going on in our world today. Everything from the riots and the uh, uh, protests to the COVID and being locked into our, our homes, <laughs> um, learning to love the way that God wants us to and show love to everyone that we meet is exactly what we need right now. So I'm glad that we're studying this and um, that God is giving us so much good information. Today, my sermon is entitled, Devoted to Love. But before we get to that, let me just give you a little reminder of what we're doing here. The Bible says that you must have faith in order to please God. But there are lots of different kinds of faith out there. There's only one kind of faith that will get you into heaven. So which kind of faith is it that pleases God the most? And how can we prove what we believe, prove our faith? Well, that's what this is all about. What kind of faith really counts in God's kingdom? A faith that shows itself through love. And that's the scripture that God gave us to meditate on, to uh, memorize, and to live this year. It is Galatians 5, 6, and it says, the only thing that really counts is faith that shows itself through love. So any belief that doesn't show itself through love doesn't count as faith to God. So you can say you believe anything, if you're not showing what you believe through how you show love, God doesn't care. It doesn't count. Right. According to the eye doctor, 2020 is perfect focus. So we figured 2020 should be a year for us to have perfect focus. And our perfect focus for 2020 is learning how to live in order to prove what we believe by the incredible love we demonstrate in our daily lives. I know I bring this up every week and I have been just about every Sunday beginning since the beginning of this year, but I think it's something that we need to remember. We need to be constantly reminded um, that this is what God has called us to. So. Bear with me as I, and forgive me if it bothers you as I do this every week. It's just kind of to lay the foundation for what we're talking about every Sunday. Last week, we discovered we need more of God's deep and abiding presence in our lives to be able to love like we should. You know, we spent months studying what love is according to God. But we found that we can't do it alone. We need God to, in order to love like we should. And it goes further. We need God's deep and abiding presence in our lives. But it takes action on our part for this to happen. We have to be honest obedient, and passionate in order for God to abide deeply in us. That's what we learned last week. In fact, let me bring up that scripture that we studied last week, kind of as, a, a again, a base for what we're going to be talking about today. It was 1 John 3, 23 and 24, and it went like this. He told us to love each other in line with the original command. 
as we keep his commands, we live deeply and surely in him, and he lives in us. And this is how we experience his deep and abiding presence in us by the spirit he gave us. Listen, God is looking for, desiring, craving a closer relationship with you. I'm telling you, you are special to God and he wants a deeper relationship with you than he has right now. He wants to be the one you think about when you wake up. You, the one you think about when, when nothing's going on or when life is in chaos. The one you, you talk to when you're alone yes. or surrounded by enemies. Yes. The one that you talk to others about. Right. He wants to abide in you. But what does that mean exactly? What does it mean to abide? Well, the Greek word for abide is meno. And the definition of meno in English is remain, dwell, endure, with the implication of a greater and longer lasting connection than you currently have. So, meno goes beyond any relationship you've had with God before. Once we are finally mature enough to focus on God, to focus on putting God's kingdom first, it's then that God begins working on abiding in us. In abiding, God really isn't interested in how much you're doing for him. He really doesn't care about you doing more for him. He just wants you to abide with him. In his book, Secrets of the Vine, Bruce Wilkinson wrote this, picture the place where the ancient trunk meets a vigorous branch. You have that in your mind? Here is the touch point, the place where abiding happens. Here is the connection where life-giving nutrients in the sap flow through to the developing fruit. The only limitation on the amount of sap that goes to the fruit is the circumference of the branch where it meets the vine. That means that the branch with the largest, least obstructed connection with the vine is abiding the most and will have the greatest potential for a huge crop. God's desire is not that you will do more for him, but that you will choose to be more with him. Only by abiding can you enjoy the most rewarding relationship with God. And it's only through abiding that we can allow God to do things like love through us. So just how important is abiding to God? Well, Jesus used the word meno, the Greek word for abiding or remaining, 10 times in seven verses in John 15. Let's take a look at that. Starting in verse four, Jesus said, abide in me, and let me abide in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, no more can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. 
He who abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a person does not abide in me, he is cast forth like a branch and is withered. And men gather it and cast it into the fire and it burns. If you abide in me and my words also abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be done for you. In this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and be made my disciples. As the Father has loved me, even so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Abiding. Remaining in His care and developing a closer relationship with Him is obviously an important thing to God. And it should be important to us. Abiding is all about the most important relationship of your life. So why don't more Christians abide like God wants? You know, I think most Christians today are unfamiliar with the practice and the promise of abiding. And as a result, they fail to reach that deep level of relationship with God. Most Christians aren't even sure how to abide in God or have him abide in them. Abiding is different than just being a Christian. You know, early in our Christian walk, when, when we're baby Christians, when it, we're, it's early in our, our Christian life, God is proactive. He pursues. He initiates. And we respond to and obey his instructions. But as we mature and we begin to abide in him and he in us, everything changes. In abiding, we must act. In abiding, it's always our move. And even though abiding isn't about doing more for God, if we want to experience it, there is more we have to do, and it doesn't come easily. You can be an expert at serving God and still know very little about abiding with God. In abiding, you seek, long for, thirst for, wait for, know, love, hear, and respond to God always. It is your life. Abiding means more God in your life, in your thoughts, in your activities, in your desires. You know, in our culture today, we're always in a rush. And so we often hurry to do things for God. And we often falter at simply enjoying his company. And yet we were created to be dissatisfied and incomplete with anything less than abiding with God and he with us. As David wrote in the Psalms, Psalm 42, 1, as the deer longs for streams of water, 
so I long for you, O God. That picture of a deer who is thirsty, who hasn't had anything to drink, is longing for dipping its tongue into that cool stream of water. It becomes a craving. It becomes a complete focus for that deer to find water. That is a picture of what that desire should be in us for God. Think about the vine and the branch that Bruce Wilkinson talked about. Why would Jesus give us a picture of a, a living thing, a grapevine, whose life force, the sap, is out of sight and hidden? Well, maybe it's because Jesus wanted to convey to us it's not what you look like on the outside. It's not what people see that counts. It's what's happening inside that really counts. So the challenge for us is to go from doing things for God to a flourishing relationship with God. So that's what I want to talk about today. What are some practical ways we can abide? So listen closely. If you're following along on the app, here's your first fill in the blank. Devoted communication. Devoted communication. The first step to abiding is to pray. I mean, that's pretty simple, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The thing is, it's important you make sure you're praying right because a lot of people have different concepts of what prayer means. Take a look at this. My prayer life is vibrant and it's active daily. I like to commune with God at nighttime. I get under those warm covers and I kiss my wife goodnight. Then I just start talking to God, just me and God, tell him everything. <sighs> Makes me just sleepy just thinking about it. <laughs> and there I am just laying in bed, laying out my request to him and he's hearing me and I know that I'm in good company with it. Where was I? The efficiency of one's prayers are directly congruent to the position of one's body. Therefore, the legs should be saying, God, help me. <laughs> Amen. There are times that me and God do not talk, and that is not God's fault, that is mine, I just get so busy. And so when I do end up talking to God, I really just try to impress him, give him a show, to just to show him how much I love him. So excuse me, will you, as I pray to God. Oh, Heavenly Father, <laughs> oh, Heavenly Father, beseech me not unto thee, how now? Brown cow. <laughs> oh, thy soul is so dry, and if I can just catch a morsel of who you are, so verily, merrily, down the street. <laughs> God, I, I just want to be used by you. God, I want, I want to be salt and light and light and salt and sight and light and... <laughs> Peppers and oregano <laughs> and pepperoni and black olives and those little bit. When I like to get my prayer on, uh, there's some things I keep in mind. Um, I think it's totally awesome that uh, God is like Santa Claus and he wants to give you the things that you want. Therefore, you need to keep lists of things. My list currently has 745 prayer requests on them. So then when I go to the Lord in prayer, it looks a little something like this. I'll just pray real quick. Um, let's see. The uno thing on my list is my mom. And so I'll pray for her now. 
Dear Heavenly Father, I lift up this sweet salt of the earth lady that you have blessed me with to be my mother. And I tell you thank you. And although I know that I'm called to respect her and I give her all due respect, there's also an issue of something she truly needs. And that is to stop a yapping. <laughs> Lord, she yaps and she doesn't know how to stop yapping. So could you please make her mute just for a day? <laughs> Nothing permanent. Don't hurt her. I love her. Just mute her. <laughs> Take your big God remote and push mute on her channel. That would be great. Henceforth, I would go on and pray all 746 things. God, you are greater than anything this world has to offer. And I can't wait for you to come back and get us. But until that time comes, would you help me just to, just to live my life day after day as if I'm just walking hand in hand with you? God, I, I have a lot of needs. And I have a lot of wants. <laughs> and sometimes I get those things confused. Help me to just trust you to meet my needs. And be thankful when you give me those other things that I just want. God, I have blown it so many times today. And I'm sorry. Thank you for your forgiveness. I don't take it for granted. And God, as I start this day out, I, I'm just reminded that this world is filled with so many spiritual potholes. Please help me to walk in such a way where I won't stumble so much. And as I'm going through this day, God, help me to live my life in such a way that would bring you glory and honor. May the life that I live be a life of worship to you. Amen. Yeah, that last one was a pretty good prayer. The other ones, eh, I've seen people pray like that. I've prayed prayers like that before, I'll be honest. But that's not what I mean by devoted communication. Relish your time with God. Talk and listen to God as you would a friend. Ask for answers, guidance, wisdom. And then, listen, take time to be still before God. Colossians 4.2 says, never stop praying. Be ready for anything by praying and being thankful. And this being thankful makes me think of a book that I'm currently reading where the author is talking about so what really angers God, what brings about God's wrath. And it might surprise you. In Romans chapter 1, Paul is talking about all of the bad things that are going on in this world, godlessness and wickedness and lying and, and all of this stuff, but it's not those things, he says, that bring about the wrath of God. Instead, he says in Romans one twenty two, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him. Being ungrateful is really what brings God's wrath, what makes God angry. I mean, that seems like such a simple thing. And yet, how often do we neglect to glorify God or give him thanks? especially if we're going through tough times. Oftentimes we get so caught up in complaining. <laughs> we, we're not grateful. We're not thankful. But as you can see here in Colossians 4.2, 
the way we need to be is thankful. And never stop praying. Prayer is a di direct connection to God that you can access anytime. And in fact, you should be accessing all the time. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, little tiny short verse, it says simply this, never stop praying. I mean, that's, that's pretty direct, pretty straightforward. Make prayer something that you do not just every day, but all day, every day. Be faithful to communion with God. Don't let a day go by that you're not constantly and consistently reaching out to communicate with him. That's what I mean by devoted communication. This week, Monday and Tuesday, make that your focus in prayer. Ask God to help you be devoted to prayer, to communication with him. Let's look at the second practical way to abide, and that is by devoted study. Devoted study. Read and study God's word, the Bible. I mean, it's great that you read other books as well. I do all the time. I'm constantly reading. But more importantly is that you are reading the Bible because in it lies the answers to all life's questions and the greatest wisdom in the universe. Devour it. It will bring you closer to that abiding that you want from God. In Psalm 119, 97 through 104 says this, Oh, how I long your instructions. I think about them all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are my constant guide. Yes, I have more insight than my teachers, for I am always thinking of your laws. I am even wiser than my elders, for I have kept your commandments. I have refused to walk on any evil path so that I may remain obedient to your word. I haven't turned away from your regulations, for you have taught me well. How sweet your words taste to me. They are sweeter than honey. Your commandments give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life. Again, from the book Secrets of the Vine, Bruce Wilkinson wrote, When you read your Bible, receive and savor it like food, like a treasure like a love letter from God to you. Remember, you're reading in order to meet someone. Ponder what you have read and apply it to your present circumstance. Let it go down into the core of your being. And as you read, expect him to commune with you. First Peter 2.2, 2, Peter wrote, In the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you must intensely crave the pure spiritual milk of God's word. For this milk will cause you to grow into maturity, fully nourished and strong, for life. Study God's word until you crave it. Wednesday and Thursday this week, 
Ask God to help you be devoted to studying his word. And then follow through. Start doing it. The desire will come. The craving will come. Be devoted to study. So, so far, we've learned that abiding begins with these visible spiritual disciplines. It's so important for us to be faithful to prayer and Bible study. And yet, people can do these things for years without ever breaking through to abiding with God. I mean, after all, reading a book about a person isn't the same as knowing that person, right? So there has to be more. And that's what I want to talk about. My last point for today, practical ways to abide, devoted time, devoted time to break through to abiding with God. You must deepen the quality of your devoted time with God. And devoted time, of course, I don't call it devotions because that's almost like you're just reading devotions. Devoted time, what I mean by that is a time that you set aside each day where it is completely devoted to deepening your relationship with God. That's what it's all about. And I hope that you are all setting aside time every day to do that. And maybe it's only five minutes, maybe it's 15, maybe it's half an hour, maybe it's an hour or two, but set aside an amount of time every day where that is all you do. I do it early in the morning because I know no one's going to bug me. No, there, I'm not going to get any phone calls. I'm not going to get it. You know, so I get up early because I know that I can devote that time without interruption. Try that. I would suggest try that. You'll be glad you did. Psalm 27, four. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. And Psalm 84.10 says, One day spent in your house, this beautiful place of worship, beats thousands spent on Greek island beaches. I'd rather scrub floors in the house of my God than be honored as a guest in the palace of sin. These verses, when it talks about being and dwelling in the house of the Lord, isn't necessarily meaning the church building. It is where God's presence is. That may be on the, your, in your bedroom on your knees, in your prayer closet, wherever it is that you set aside to meet with God. That's what this psalmist was talking about. Set apart the kind of time that it takes to build a relationship with God. Put aside a place. Too many Christians make their daily time with God a drudgery that brings very little joy. It doesn't need to be that way. Did you hear David's attitude in these scriptures? Savor the time you spend with God. Decide right now that you're going to seek God until you find him and until you crave that time with him. You savor it. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. That's what God is, says to us. I would recommend, however long you're spending with God now, extend 
your devoted time until you are abiding with God all day long. In his book, Just Like Jesus, Max Lucado talks about a man named Frank Laubach. He was a missionary who lived in the early 1900s. Let me read to you an excerpt from his diary. He wrote, Can we have that contact with God all the time? All the time awake, fall asleep in his arms and awaken in his presence? Can we attain that? Can we do his will all the time? Can we think his thoughts all the time? Can I bring the Lord back in my mind flow every few seconds so that God shall always be in my mind? I choose, he wrote, to make the rest of my life an experiment in answering this question. And the diary goes on to show how Frank spends more and more time on this goal and how it brings him closer and closer to abiding with God all the time and how doing so allows God to more fully direct his thoughts and decisions and actions and attitudes. And five months after what I just read, he writes this, Oh, this thing of keeping in constant touch with God, of making him the object of my thought and the companion of my conversations is the most amazing thing I ever ran across. It is working. I cannot do it even half a day, not yet, but I believe I shall be doing it someday for the entire day. It is a matter of acquiring a new habit of thought. And then two weeks later, he writes this. Thou art no longer a stranger, God. Thou art the only being in the universe who is not partly a stranger. Thou art all the way inside with me here. I mean to struggle tonight and tomorrow as never before, not once to dismiss thee. For when I lose thee for an hour, I lose. The thing thou wouldst do can only be done when thou hast full sway all the time. Last Monday was the most completely successful day of my life to date, so far as giving my day in complete and continuous surrender to God is concerned. I remember how, as I looked at people with a love God gave, they looked back and acted as though they wanted to go with me. I felt then that for a day, I saw a little of that marvelous pull that Jesus had as he walked along the road day after day, God intoxicated and radiant with the endless communion of his soul with God. My friends, that's what I mean by more devoted time. You can Always be present with God, no matter what trials are whirling around you. God invites us to be tapped into his purposes and his power and his presence all the time. It's up to us to act. So Friday and Saturday this week, I would love for you to make this a focus of prayer. Ask God to help you become devoted to spending time with him. And in so doing, learn to abide. 
Keep in mind, please keep this in mind. Abiding is not based on feelings. It's, it's not a sensation. It's a relationship. Don't wait until you feel something to think you've experienced God. Abiding is an act of faith. And what is faith? Well, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Remember, the sap is inside the vine, inside the branch. It can't be seen. Abiding is a radical expression that you value God's unrestricted presence in your life more than any feeling that you may experience. And if you think you always have to have strong emotions to know you've been with God, you'll go away from many of your devoted times disappointed. It's what's happening inside that counts. It's being devoted to your communication with God, devoted to studying his word, and devoted to the time you spend with him that counts. Don't look for outward expressions that God is abiding. Just have faith. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, wow, to abide with you and have you abide in us. That should be the goal of every Christian. And God, I pray for the people who are listening today that it would be their goal to abide with you and have you, your Holy Spirit, abide in us them. But God, we realize that this isn't something you're just going to force on us. It's not something that just happens. And in fact, it's not even initiated by you. It's something that you desire, but you want us to crave. So God, help us to act. Help us to take that first step by being faithful, by being devoted to communication with you, to praying the right way, talking with you, listening to you as we would our best friend. Help us to be faithful, devoted to studying your word. God, let us do it faithfully even when we don't feel like it, even when we don't seem to be getting out of it what we think we should, to be faithful anyway, to spend the time that is necessary to get your word inside of us and God make it come alive once we do. God help us to be faithful, to be devoted to the time that we spend with you. Oh, God, forgive me for not spending that time with more quality than I have. Help me, God, to crave that time with you, to deepen the quality of that time that I spend with you. Help me to find you because I am seeking you with all my heart, not occasionally, not once, but all the time. I pray, God, that you would help me like you did this missionary, Frank Laubach, to crave that time with you so much that I spend more and more and 
more devoted time daily to just thinking your thoughts, hearing your voice, experiencing your abiding, deep abiding presence. Because I realize, God, this is the only way that I'm ever going to be able to love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the only way I'm ever going to be able to love my neighbor as myself. I do love you, God. Help me to do it better. In the name of Jesus, your son, I pray. Amen. Thank you all for your attention today. Please take this seriously. Pray these prayer focuses daily this week. And then see what happens. Expect, because you have faith, that God is going to abide in you like never before, and you in him. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon.